Welcome back to Mastering the Basics of eQuest Energy Modeling. My name is Neil Bolger, and we are going to look at user defaults and space templates, which is something I think is a really ingenious way of using eQuest that I'm certain other people have utilized and used in their own workflows, uh, but something that can be quite powerful once you pick up on this idea. So in the last video, we went over user defaults and user defined defaults and made some custom variables. And now what we're actually going to look at is kind of going beyond just global parameters and custom variables and a little bit beyond these user defined defaults where we might say we want every space to be the same density or we want every body heat to be the same, but using those same fields. And what we're going to be using is a way of setting up a model where we can create default space types and have just one input, the description of the zone actually, be what changes all the other inputs for that zone. And so it turns out that this description field inside the space properties window is a very powerful field. It's the only field in the entire model that you can actually write anything you want into it. And the reason that's so powerful is because we can use this to define a switch or to be our key for what this space should be. And this can be very useful for very large models where there might only be maybe 10 or 15 different space types, but there might be hundreds of thermal zones and hundreds of rooms. And to change the equipment of every single input for every single corridor could take tens of minutes to hours. And so to give an example of this, this is a large building I made of this high rise residential tower. It's using floor multipliers, so we're missing about 10 floors in the middle here. But I'm sort of spinning around. And honestly, this model was probably too big, but it was one of those where we created it before we realized uh, what a bad idea it was to make this many zones, and it was a little too late to go backwards. And so we ended up implementing some of these strategies we do on a lot of our models of space type templates. So if I look at just these, what, do, what I really mean by this, if I go in to look at one of these rooms, one of these retail floors, there's a lot of blue fields. And so every key field, the density of people, the temperature that room is sized at, the equipment, the schedule of that equipment, the lighting power density, the schedule of the lighting, all of these fields are looking at this description field. And if you notice, each different one, stairs, ST, mechanical room, ME. If we go up a few floors, res, RE. This is defining what level. And so what we have done is we've written in a little script that looks at this field and says, what is this field? What are the two letters in this field? If those two letters equals a certain two letters in my if then statement, pick a certain area of person. So let's go ahead and just look at one of these definitions and then we're gonna go back to a much simpler model. So what this looks like, I clicked on the right click on that cell and I said, what is the user defined default? And currently it's set to this expression where it has an equation that says, look at the active or look at the activities description field and this c dash activities dash desk is the equest name for that field switch is like a switch statement for programming it says find what's here and then match it to one of these cases if you cannot find one of these use the default and it says if i find a case i'm going to use this variable that's created this local global variable area co and then all those different variables a user can be changing as the design might change um, for everything from people to lights to plugs it's not usually my preference to make this many global input variables but that's how this was set up so that's a big way of, of why you would do it and to look at more practical matters here is our building 
that we were looking at in another video. It's three floors. If we were to look at the spaces in the spreadsheet mode, right now they all came through with very generic descriptions. You know, office executive private. So I went through and said, well, I want to make some space types. I'm going to go down to my space types tutorial here. And I wanted to make four space types. I want a mechanical room. I want to make some conference rooms, corridors, and open offices. And I really recommend using space type descriptions that are no more than maybe two to four letters. When you write out an entire name, the formulas don't work quite as well. So stick to two to four letters if you can, which should be plenty, and kind of create your own key of where that is. So I went through and I named all these rooms first. I said, I'm going to change the office description. And for the tutorial, I just picked definitions. And I think if I can jump over here, I already have that done. So I kind of went through and said, I'm going to set up open office. This room's going to be a conference, mechanical. Great, now we're ready to go. So I went through and did that. And we'll change some so you see. But I really want to jump towards actually putting this code into practice. So we're going to start with the area per person. And right now they're all defaulted to request defaults, green, 100 square foot a person. And so if we go into this variable, let's say we're going to change the user default. We're going to do this radio button. And then I'm going to write switch. I want to make a switch command. I want to look at the same level, pound L, c-activity-description. So pound L says I want to look at a variable that's at the same level as the one I'm changing. So if you notice, the activity description is right here. It's at that same level. It's not a parent of the entire floor. There's variable definitions that are only associated at the floor, and it's not a child of this space. It's not like a, a window would be the child of a wall, and the wall would be a child of the room, and that's the relationship L uses. It's on the same level. I actually have some of this text already copied in Word here, and I'll pause when I paste it. So what I've written in here, I said, look for this variable description and then pick from these cases. And if you can't find it, the default will be a thousand. And this is a thousand square foot a person, so a higher number is less. And for spaces that don't have that many people, I would just recommend using a very high number as a safety margin because it's very, the software does not like it when you put in zero. And if we're just changing that field, this is a good way to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And right away you notice all those change blue. And that's because we already had gone through and set up all these definitions here. And now if I change one of these, if I made this one open office, you can see that just changed to 150. I'm gonna put it back at conference room. So if we also now, so I did the people, right? Now all the people are dynamic. If we have a change in our design, I could pick any one of these to change our inputs. I can go back to the user defaults. I can change one of these inputs. It'll update every single room. I'm going to go to equipment and do the same thing. And you can actually see, I think I already put this equation in. If you manipulate this one, we can go in. Sure enough, I had pasted it in a switch statement, pound L. And then I looked at that field, the C activity description. And I have these four cases. And I picked my watts per square foot. And these should either come from a standard or from good design and good simulation um, references open offices these days, you know, pretty low plug loads, 0.75 watts a square foot. So again, this is just gonna run through the model. And here I've intentionally not actually set all the spaces to accept this yet. Some of them you see are still red. And what that means is, you know, they've been hard coded in. This was coming from the wizard mode. And even if I wrote in 1.2, that's always gonna stay there. It's only if I right click on that cell and say, I wanna restore this to the default it will now, instead of defaulting to eQuest, it will default to my user default. And so I can right click every one of these and do that again. I can say restore default, or I can just copy in this view a cell that's already been restored. I hit Control C and then I press down and Control V, I can paste on each one. 
And really the best way in the spreadsheet mode is to paste one cell at a time. The spreadsheet mode can be very fickle, but again, we're only doing this once, so it doesn't save that much time to try and paste them all at the same time. Okay, there we go. We have all our watts per square foot are now dynamic. So as spaces change, as zones change, or as the watts per square foot change for zone types, we can change that here or it'll track with the description. Same with lighting. I'm gonna go a little quicker here and just copy this one I've already made for lighting. And so you can see it's pretty nice. Oh, I think I already did this. It's pretty nice to just keep these things in a spreadsheet uh, or a Word document, I mean, so it's easier for you to go through and just have the text ready to go no matter what model you're making. Write down the new watts per square foot for this job you want to use or pick defaults. And now all the lights are linked to our space types. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Um, I also just wanted to point it out. I actually switched to eQuest 364. 365 seems to be crashing whenever I set some of these defined defaults, which is a little odd, but uh, either way, that's it. So for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and run this just to show that it works. It took a second there, but I paused anyways. Uh, and we're going to bring up the results. So you can see, again, here's my cooling heating load. Uh, so my building works. Um, so that's that's the big that's the big um, idea of templates. And we're going to take this a little further in a number of ways. We could take this further into linking it to schedules. We could take it further in specifying the people's sensible and latent loads, as well as this temperature. And you could now actually start to pick up more fields that can sometimes make a model slightly more accurate but often are not um, given a lot of attention because modeling is a very fast industry. You have to move very quickly. Uh, so yes, the, the biggest thing is I'll show you a model that has other space types linked. And then in the next tutorial, we're gonna look at linking the space type definition over to the thermal zone. And how can properties of the thermal zone, because this zone is attached to a space, also change? So if I change a space to be a hallway or to be a mechanical room, can I change the set points that room is operating at? All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.